So after we check into the hotel and go see the Anne Frank house, Bill makes this 10-minute speech about the courage of Anne Frank, and they give him this plaque and everything. Bill and Chris and I slip out a different door and get into a different car than the one we came in. The paparazzi are all waiting next to the first car, but we've fooled them. And before I know it, we're pulling up outside a little bistro called the Bulldog. So we go inside, me, Bill, and Chris, and halfway through our cups of coffee, just plain coffee, which I don't even drink, but this time I do, <laughs> Chris gets up from the table and goes over to the counter. By this point, you would think people would be looking at us, not at me, but at Bill and Chris, and you would be right. Half of them are, but the other half aren't, and that's because they're totally baked. <laughs> Chris comes back with a little rolled cigarette, a joint, and he lights it. He takes a hit, and then he hands it to me, and I take a hit. <laughs> and then I do the only polite thing I can think of to do. I hand it to Bill, and he takes a hit. And yes, he inhales. <laughs> and then he hands it back to Chris. And this stuff doesn't taste like any pot I've ever had before. This stuff tastes different like, and that's when Chris says, blonde Lebanese hash. <laughs> and by the time I let out my next toke, I am so unbelievably buzzed. I turn to Bill and say, I thought you didn't inhale. <laughs> and he goes, I truly didn't. Not my first time, anyway. <laughs> and besides, that was pot. And I think, it's all semantics, man. <laughs> And then Bill turns to me and Chris and goes, do you guys think I look fat? <laughs> and Chris and I both go, no, no way. After that, Bill and Chris and I all order egg salad sandwiches and french fries with mayo and chocolate cake. And we eat every last bite of everything with more coffee. And then Bill starts talking about Monica. Uh. <laughs> he says, I know I could have done better. And Chris says, you could have had Sharon. <laughs> and I say, Sharon Stone? And Bill says, yeah, I could have, but I blew it. She came to the White House one night, but..." Hillary kept watching me like a hawk. <laughs> Bill looks depressed for a moment or two, and then he says, no man will ever bring out of the presidency the reputation which carries him into it. And then he looks at me and Chris and goes, do you know who said that? And I think, y you did just now. <laughs> But Bill goes, Thomas Jefferson. After that, we wind up at the Rijksmuseum, staring at some Vermeer painting of a Dutch girl emptying a chamber pot for what seems like four hours. <laughs> Finally, we make our way back to our hotel and crash. The next day, we fly back to London, and I get dropped off first. Nobody says a word about the bulldog or the blonde Lebanese hash. Just like that, the trip is over, and it's like the whole thing never happened. It's like maybe I just dreamed it. But I still have my admission stub for the Anne Frank house <laughs> and the little box of wooden matches from the Bulldog. <laughs> A lot of things happen when I get back home. September 11th, the war in Afghanistan and all the paranoia about homeland security. I don't know if Bill made any trips out to California or not, but if he did, I didn't hear from him. In fact, after that, just like so many other friendships in Hollywood, I never heard from Bill again. 
just like that? Well, he flaked. <laughs> I do a speaking engagement in Connecticut, and the day after, I drive out to Chappaqua just for the hell of it, to Bill's house. But the Secret Service agents in the guardhouse tell me the president and his family are away. I notice Buddy hanging out on the grass on the front lawn, and I ask one of the agents if I can play a little fetch with him. He says, OK. So I grab a new can of tennis balls out of the trunk of my car, and for half an hour or so, I teach Buddy the basics of fetch. He's not very good at dropping the ball, but after a few throws, he starts to get the hang of it. Just before I leave, Buddy gives me a look with his big, sad brown eyes, and I know that he can tell this is the last time he'll be seeing me. Dogs know things. <laughs> a few months later, I would read in the paper that Buddy got run over by a pickup truck while the president and his family were vacationing in Acapulco. I think about calling Bill, but I don't, because I know we both know that there are few things in life that hurt worse than losing your dog. Now, it doesn't matter if some of you don't believe me. If you're sitting there thinking, that never happened. He made this whole thing up. He was never friends with the president. The president was his imaginary friend. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I know there are just as many of you out there who are thinking, I smoked hash in Amsterdam with Bill Clinton, too. What's the big deal? <laughs> One day, I'm working at my desk at home, and the phone rings. The lady on the other end of the line says, I have the president calling for Mr. Cleveland. I go, that's me, thinking that it's Bill. But then suddenly, it's another voice on the line. It's southern, but more nasal and twangy, like Texas. And I realize who it is. It's George. And he says, is this Rick? And I go, yes, Mr. President. And he goes, Bill Clinton tells me you're good with dogs. <laughs> and I go, that depends on the breed. And he goes, well, we've got a Scottish terrier named Barney. And he keeps urinificating. <laughs> And I go, on the rug in the Oval Office, the one with the presidential seal on it? And he goes, that's the one. What can I do to get him to stop? Scottish Terriers are a hard mouth breed, and they're inbred and mean and not too smart or good with kids, and they were bred to hunt for rats. They can smell a rat a mile away. <laughs> I think about it for a second or two, and then I say, well, Mr. President, I wish I could help you, but Scottish Terriers aren't my breed. So I'm sorry, but I guess you're just shit out of luck. <laughs> Once again, I can't believe that I'm on the phone talking to the President of the United States, or that I just told him he was shit out of luck. <laughs> but I did. That was the most fun I've had since I smoked pot with Bill Clinton in Amsterdam. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. We were just debating, is it true or fiction? Great show. Like show. Great show. Fabulous. Fabulous. He reminded me of a young Spalding Gray. Great. I